Uh, I'm Alan Coase. I want to welcome Raj Shah, Deputy Communications Director and Research Director for the Republican National Committee. Raj, welcome to the uh, program. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, now, I understand you are in charge of oppo research for Hillary Clinton. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. What do you, what do you got? Uh, we've got all sorts of uh, fun and interesting things that uh, reinforce the kinds of themes and the kinds of uh, narratives that have been building uh, among uh, a lot of the electorate about Hillary Clinton. Um, things that reinforce the fact that she is uh, untrustworthy and dishonest. Like what, um, like what for example? Well, I mean, um, you know, whether it's policy flip-flops, whether it's um, the use of a secret email server and the things surrounding it, kind of the record, and, and, and you know, you know, challenging things she said about her life story, which don't really add up. Um, there are so many, there's sort of a myriad of examples. We'll get into uh, a lot more specific ones as we kind of move forward through the election cycle. I don't want to, I don't want to give away too much, um, you know, uh, <laughs> right out of the gate, but, yeah. um, but I'll just say that we'll be, we have a lot of information that kind of reinforces several right. themes, including that one. Now, aren't you talking about things that have pretty much been out there? I mean, she talked years ago about a vast right wing conspiracy. Isn't what you're saying proving her to be correct? Well, look, on both sides of the aisle, there's, uh, you know, kind of professionalized opposition research. You look into and you kind of question the records records of and you look into the backgrounds of, um, you know, the candidates you're running against to uh, scrutinize the statements they're making to see if they're consistent with their record. Uh, there's nothing here that's unusual um, or nothing here that somebody like David Brock isn't doing uh, full time on behalf of the Clintons. Well, he has to do it against the Clintons. So, uh, but, but yeah, well, I mean, yeah. is there, is there any is there any new ground to be plowed here with Hillary Clinton? I I certainly think that there is. Um, there are certainly new examples and things about her record as Secretary of State um, that move into an area that people really don't know a whole lot about. I think that um, you know a lot of people talk about um, her record on foreign policy, which is you know pretty well documented, and her positions on issues. But she also oversaw a agency with hundreds of thousands of, or sorry, sixty thousand employees and hundreds of um, embassies and consulates overseas. It was a huge management job as well. And you see failure across failure from, you know, GAO reports and inspector general reports. You're seeing a misallocation of billions of dollars in funds, insider deals, uh, things that I think would raise a lot of eyebrows and would let you think that, um, you know, donors and special interests rather than um, – Individuals who actually need, you know, support from the United States are sort of the ones who get to get at the front of the yeah, line. But what new ground is going to be broken in this campaign? Do you think? Well, I think, um, I, I think. Well, first of all, we really don't know entirely what this campaign is going to be about. I've always said that uh, in the spring of an election year, you're talking about one thing and you predict what the election is going to be about. But in the fall, it could be about entirely something else. You could have events, whether it be the economy, whether it be foreign policy, that sort of drive the debate. And so I think, you know, it's about it's about character, it's about questions of of their records that we'll be able to talk about. But candidly, um, you know, it could be something that seems innocuous right now that becomes a huge issue down the road. Now, if your candidate is Donald Trump, which is a possibility, you got a guy who faces fraud for, uh, you know, the uh, Trump University, flip-flopping on positions. Uh, he's got all kinds of baggage. Uh, so if you're going to go after Hillary and your candidate is someone like Trump, isn't that a problem? Well, look, none of these candidates uh, on the Republican side go into this race flawlessly, and none of them are without, um, you know, vulnerabilities that can be um, targeted. What I would say about Hillary Clinton is that um, she's extremely well defined and defined in a negative frame for most Americans. And I think whether it's Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, John Kasich, I mean, Donald Trump may have high, uh, high negative. name ID. Yeah, well. yeah, well, yeah, but but I mean, I think he's viewed still he's well known as a celebrity and as sort of a figure on, on those on those fronts how do people really see how he will lead america well, the, neg really the negatives on trump and cruz are enormous i mean yeah, your two top candidates with the most delegates so far have huge negatives Sure, but I also think that when we get into a general election environment in which you have a you know one on one contest between a Democrat who's going to take the country in a similar direction that it has gone over the last eight years in which you've seen sort of stagnant wages um you've seen a foreign policy uh, kind of in disarray over well, it's, it's not her policy she wasn't the she wasn't the commander in chief. 
She was the commander in chief. She was only the architect of it as the secretary of state. Not really. The, she's not the, the architect. Just, she's following orders from the administration. Well, she's the staunchest supporter of it on the campaign trail, whether it's um, policies in Libya or it, the Iran deal, which she takes credit for as the architect. Well, of, actually, you don't have a, the problem is you have a guy like Ted Cruz who says, I want to repeal every word of the Iran deal when it's a multilateral agreement. He can't do that. Well, I mean, he, he would like to, and, and I think uh, other candidates would like to strongly enforce and would have prevented that deal from going into place uh, to begin with. You know, it's a bad deal. We're giving Iran uh, hundred, uh, over $150 No, we're, ag- we're actually releasing their own money. You see, this idea that we're giving the money is well, not accurate. Sanctions. It's their money well, that was frozen. Sanctions. It's their money to begin with. Well, it's correct me if I'm wrong, but it's fifty-five billion dollars in sanctions relief. But it's their so money. Releasing their money. It's their money. Well, well, it's assets that have been seized for violating. Right, sanctions. but it's not like we're giving the money. It's money that is their money, and in return for them getting their assets unfrozen, we have, uh, you know, transparency to a much larger sure, extent then, than we had before. Over- Sure, and there's over $100 billion in uh, foreign debt relief as well. So, uh, you know, it's not a deal that's for free. And and this program um, of sort of monitoring their development and their nuclear program only lasts for 10 years. And so, you know, their breakout capacity will still be shortened. They still could have the ability to um, produce a nuclear weapon down the road. And most importantly, their sponsorship and support of terrorism around the world has been well, on the rise rather than well, we, been, we can uh, debate the, the I don't want to spend any time debating sure. the Randall, but the bigger issue here <laughs> uh, with, you know, we can certainly, it's fun to debate this stuff. But by the way, we're talking to Raj sure. Shah, Deputy Communications Director for the Republican National Committee, Research Director as well, uh, is that... Uh, you've got a president who's got a, what, depending upon the poll you look at, 51, 52 percent approval rating in the eighth year of his presidency. That's going to be hard to combat when you've got Hillary Clinton, if she is the nominee, likely, running on his legacy. And his legacy is very popular now with the American people. Well, I think he is very popular with the American people. When you actually break it down and talk about issues, uh, it becomes less and less popular. And when you actually ask voters, do you want a president who's going to take the country in a similar direction or, or take us on a new direction, the new direction number wins almost by a two-to-one margin. And so when you talk about change... I don't know where it wins. I don't, know what, 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 I don't know what poll that is. I and mean, you've got people who support Barack Obama who don't want to go in the opposite direction of Barack Obama. Well, yeah, but but I'm saying that's because he's well liked and he is trusted among enough uh, Americans to keep his numbers high. A lot of these are personality ratings, and, and a lot yeah. of these reflect the fact that voters like him. They don't like Hillary Clinton. She has a, a tough time connecting with the electorate. She's admitted as much, and that means that she's she's judged more so uh, based on her record and her policy positions and on the issues. And there, she doesn't tally up very well. Well, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a candidate who doesn't have the high negatives like Cruz or Trump, and. So Secondly, you're going to have to convince the American people that the eight, last eight, that the, the, the administration we have now has been an abject failure, which if you look at the numbers and the number of people now employed, the unemployment numbers, very, very difficult to convince the American people of that. Right. Well, I think the opposite is the case because, um, you know, the American people, they may see that, yes, the unemployment rate has has reduced. But what kind of jobs are being uh, are being are being uh, replaced? The ones that were lost uh, are being replaced with they are lower wage jobs. They're jobs with less benefits. Um, and folks, many folks, millions of Americans feel left behind in this economy. And so while GDP and some macro numbers may rise a bit, um, you're seeing still stagnant growth from middle class class Americans. Now, they're being pinched yeah. by well they're being pinched by higher health care costs and other costs that are that continue to rise. Well uh, you you're gonna attack Hillary Clinton on you're gonna say she's unethical, untrustworthy, failed record at the uh, State Department. That is you, w- what your attack is. Are the American people tired of this kind of negativity in politics? Well, I think, you know, every cycle, Americans say that they don't like negativity, and then every cycle, uh, negative ads seem to take their toll. Because you think um, they work, right? I mean, uh, you'll say they work, negative well, campaigning works. I think, I, I would say, you know, negative campaigning, I mean, it's it's all part of accountability for candidates, holding candidates account- are accountable, and then providing a contrast. I mean, I would say, for example, uh, Bernie Sanders has sharpened his message over the last month, month and a half, but I wouldn't consider what he is doing negative campaigning. I think he's saying, um, you know, when he talks about big money in politics or contributions from the fossil fuel industry or connections to lobbyists, um, you know, disagreements on um, international trade agreements, these sorts of things are not 
not necessarily negative politics. They are contrasting on issues and contrasting on character, conviction, and records that I think are very, um, very legitimate and you know central to his message. And it's why he's actually catching up to her in national polls. Sounds like you're feeling the burn. How prepared are you if Hillary Clinton is not the nominee? Uh, we are prepared for several scenarios. Obviously, um, there's the potential white knight scenario of Joe Biden getting off the bench. Um, you know, Bernie Sanders, obviously, we have a file on him. Um, so we're working, but obviously, we're, we're the most prepared for Hillary Clinton. We've been engaged in a years-long effort, um, you know, kind of unprecedented in its size and scope here at the RNC. And uh, we're kind of chomping at the bit, waiting for the uh, general election to yeah. Yeah. Uh, get started. You've got a handful of people sitting watching TV. 24 7 writing and everything's being said right i mean you, you, you're like well uh, you, it's more than it's it's more than one handful yeah, yeah i better do handfuls of people <laughs> raj i thank you yeah. for being on the program yeah. tonight thank you for your time thanks very thanks much a lot for having That's me raj Shah, deputy communications director and research director for the rnc 